everyone. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X. I am the Black Shadow, and last time, folks, uh, we uh, well, we've continued our exploration of uh, some of the the side areas and bits and pieces that we can do uh, in this game, taking advantage of a sort of a, a bit of a, a, a you know, rest in the storyline, if you will. Um, so. Uh, the essay last time, folks, we, we were doing that. Um, we've had uh, some fun and games already. We've, we've gone and explored uh, various sort of the little hidden locations here, there, and everywhere, folks. Um, such as like the, the Besaid Islands, you know, there's lots of special areas there. Um, you know, Barge Temple, we even visited quickly. Uh, Mushroom Rock Row, a couple of areas there. Beacon Isle Island had a special area as well. Um, and the various bits and pieces, folks. Um, there's plenty for us to do, mind you. However, uh, we uh, we you know, managed to get hold of some you know very good bits of armors and some decent weapons, which very 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 usefully lead us to the topic of today's video, folks. The none other than the celestial weapons, the only weapons of the game. One for each of our seven uh, comrades in arms. Uh, we've actually already got hold of one, mind you. Uh, Riku got him. Um, and in this video, I will be going over how to get hold of all seven weapons. Um, and hopefully I'll also get into how to power them up, because as you can see from the God Hand, as it is, not really that good, because there's more to Celestial Weapons than just picking them up. Um, so, if you want to get hold of the weapons, uh, the first thing you must do is you must make sure that you have the Celestial Mirror. To gain the Celestial Mirror, you must first go to the Calm Lands, you must go to Rivian Temple, win the Chocobo race underneath the temple. That will get you the Cloudy Mirror. You must then take said Cloudy Mirror, uh, Miller, uh, Cloudy Mirror, and you must go to the Makalania Woods after defeating Unalesca, might you, in, in, in Zanakan. After you defeat her and you get back access to the airship, um, you can go back to Makalania. Um, and you must go to where we found the boy that was missing in the woods for the, um, the mother and father, do a little side quest, find the area that the game tells you to remember, um, interact with it, and it will uh, tell you um, that the, um, you know, it reacts to the cloudy mirror, use the cloudy mirror, and it will change to the celestial mirror, which is really good. With the celestial mirror, you can then actually open up and access the locations and areas required, in order to get hold of our seven ultimate weapons, folks. So, um, yeah, so Riku, as we've already got, to get hold of, the, of um, Riku's God Hand, you must come to the uh, the menu here, um, go to Input. You must type in the word God Hand, no spaces, G-O-D-H-A-N-D, full caps, no spaces. Um, type it incorrectly, and the air uh, will reveal the Mushroom Rock area, I believe it is. Um, go into here, um, follow the pathway down, it's not very far, you'll find a chest which can only be opened by the Celestial Mirror, folks. Rabbit. Lovely! Okay, wasn't that fun, folks? I, I enjoyed that. So, now we've got hold of, uh, we've already got hold of Riku's, um, weapon, we still have six more to get. And the first area we're going to be going to, um, is actually for Lulu's, uh, believe it or not. Um... I mean, you'd think, well, you know, go for Titus's or Auron's because you use them so much. But no, I want to do Lulu's first. So uh, make sure you've saved your game. And you must visit the Barge Temple, uh, which must be unlocked uh, by inserting the correct coordinates. Um, I showed off what those were in the previous video. So um, if you haven't already done that, look it in there and you'll find me entering it um, and you'll see where that is. So, Here we go. let's go to um, let's go to Barge Temple for our second visit. It will not be our last, mind you. There is more for us to do here um, than we will be doing in this video, mind you. Uh, so last time we we were here, we went southwards just to check out the the owl bed um, inscriptions. This time we want to head northwards. And uh, you remember this bit, folks, how we, we crumbled down here and we fought that guy the last time we came at the very start of the game? Yeah, this is where we need to uh, to entertain. 
go to the um, to the uh, broken bit of the bridge, and we'll jump in. What's up? Something here? I almost got eaten by a fiend. <laughs> yeah, that was a close Payback call. Time. I get the picture. All right, let's go. Payback time. What you think the guy's here? Mm, well, I don't know. Um, do bear in mind for this bit that we've only got Tidus, Waka, and Riku. Um, now the reason I'm doing this one first is because we do surprise, surprise, have a fight to deal with. Um, and this fight isn't so bad as long as you prepare for it correctly and you know what you're preparing for. Now, I'm just going to give you one huge piece of advice. Whatever on earth you do in this place, you must have armor for Titus, Walker, and Riku and have some kind of armor that has stone proof. For goodness sakes, folks. I don't care if you have to find it. I don't care if you have to um, customize, I believe it's Petrify Grenades. Um, in order to, uh, I think it's Petrify Grenades. I could be wrong. I don't know why I put that on. Uh, stone Proof. Yes, 20 Petrify Grenades. I don't care if you have to customize those onto the armor. Um, you can get the Petrify Grenades. You can get 99 of those anyways um, from... Uh, uh, from the monster arena um, by unlocking one of the monsters there, mind you. But make sure you have armor with stone proof on it. Also, if you have any kind of death protection, that's an added bonus. But make sure you have stone proof protection. Um, I'll explain where I picked that one up from. Um, this, I actually, uh, well, I'll say now, I've been basically doing a bit of um, fighting. Um, in the arena off screen, um, and I picked up some reasonable equipment. I mean, that's not too bad, folks. Uh, and Riku, uh, I'll give the soul charge which I just made, so that's fine. Lovely. Rohood rematch, uh, and the untouchable, which we found for us, which was useful. Right, okay then. So, what we want to do is go down. What the eerie place still. Um, what we want to try and do is we want to head back inside the, um, the back into here, folks. Well, holy crap for boss time! Oh yeah, he's back for round two. I mean, if you didn't see that one coming, my goodness me, Geos Gano, round two. Now, unfortunately. This guy, oddly enough, is immune to scanning, but is um, you can sense, which is a bit of a strange one, folks. I'm going to be really honest, but that's just how it is. So you want to take this guy down. Uh, he is unfortunately armoured, um, but he is weak to um, any elemental weapons that you may or may not have, folks, which is really handy. But unfortunately, yeah, he's 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 quite resistant. Yeah, I've been doing lots of stuff off screen, folks. I will delve into in the first probably video. But watch out for that stone punch. That is why you have stone protection. If he hits one of your characters with that, which he most likely will, instant petrification. And because you're it, you are underwater, instantly shattered. You're down to two characters. He'll do it again if there's only until there's only one. Then he will actually stop using it. But you've got to be. You've got to be so careful of that. It is nasty. As I say, it hits you. It's it's like being ejected out of battle. Don't let it happen. He also has another attack as well, a knockout punch, uh, which can inflict death. Um, so that's why you've got the death protection, just in case. But uh, you know, this guy isn't too bad. I mean, my party at this point as well is, is doing pretty decently for itself. You've got to be careful of this guy. And I don't know why I haven't just bothered to cast, um, I should have cast haste. I don't know why I haven't done that yet, that would be a good idea. Yeah, I'll keep mugging him. You can get a, a handy dandy, uh, amount of, uh, water gems off this guy, actually, which is quite good. There we are, lovely. However, there is a problem with using haste. 
And that, oddly enough, resolves around Geos Gainer. Remember how he tried to swallow Titus? Yeah! He's going to do it again! He will do this after a few turns, folks. He will actually swallow a character. It's a bit like the Abyss Worms and that kind of thing. Except it's a bit different. Um, when he swallows a character, he will copy um, any state's effects that the character has. So in this case, haste. You know, if you've got protect, share, or anything like that, he'll copy that too, which is quite annoying. So now we've got our character stuck inside. Um, now, there's not a lot you can really do here, folks, apart from struggle and actually hit him from inside, which does nullify the, the armor and the fixed scales. So you'll get a decent shot off, especially if you get a critical be But he'll spit him out and into the kill. Which is not so good. So revive. Now what you must do, folks, I'm g a huge warning here, is you must bear be careful of um, when uh, he decides he wants to uh, swallow a character. Uh, because, um, whoa, holy mother of woo, going for the instant death attack there. What a hit there by Waka. Great shot there. I'm gonna keep mugging away. Get hold of as many water chips as I can. I need them badly. Oh, you see, if he swallows a character, folks. Um, oh, death protection getting in there. Um, if he does swallow a character, you must make sure not to kill um, Geos Gaino until he spits him out. Um, if, you kill a, if you kill him when there's a character still inside, it will spit out the character and do 9999 damage to everything. So basically, you're gonna die. So you've just got to sit there and wait until he spits the character out um, and then finish him off. Unless you've got, you know, or unless you've got three characters, you've got characters with um, broken, uh, with broken the HP limit. But, uh, that's quite unlikely at this point. So that takes care of Geos Gate. It's not too hard a to fight, really, as long as you know what you're doing. Now, now that we've taken care of him, you can head into the actual, uh, into the temple, if you so desire. But that's not what we're here for. We're here on Celestial Weapon Business. Now, what you must do, now you defeated him, is head down to this little alcove. You see this here, folks? Um, about sort of southwestern on the map. It's just go into it. What you're looking for is you want to go down this little right nice and deep down on this right side because there's a chest hiding down here celestial mirror will react use that and the onion knights lulu's celestial weapon folks and yes it is a not just a reference to early final fantasy games and the job class but it is literally it is literally the guy. It, it is great. Oh, I'll be showing. You'll see all these, the actual, most of these celestial weapons um, in action later on in the LP. Uh, one thing to note as well from um, Geos Gaino um, is that um, you also want to bear in mind what equipment he drops off. He can drop two things. He can drop, um, here it is, folks, yes. He can drop either um, equipment with no encounters on it. Or he can drop um, armor as well, which has auto reflect now. Armor with auto reflect is quite nice, but um, weapons do not normally have no encounters on it. Um, I believe it's only customizable onto armor. And you know how long I've been longing for a weapon with no encounters on it, folks. Believe me. So we will be using that. In fact, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to equip that onto Lulu. Um, it does. It does not need to be in your active party of three, the starting three, to, to be effective. It can be on. It can be anyone. Um, but now that we've equipped that, we will not have to worry about random encounters for the rest of the, of this entire video, which is brilliant. But we'll be heading into the temple itself later on. Right, lovely. Okay then. So we've got Riku's and we've got Lulu's. Uh, where do we want to go next, folks? Um, well, let's do two in one go. Let's head over to the Calm Lands. 
Um, now, I'm not going to head to the Calm Land directly, mind you, because I want to... Um, I need to go to a specific part of it, and it's kind of almost quicker. Well, you can go make, um, to Lake Makalania um, and head through there and go for the top side, but now that we have got no, a no encounters weapon, we can just go there directly. Here we go. Either way, you've got a little bit of a hike to get to where you, you want to go. Lovely. Because what we need to do here is we need to have a chat with the Chocobo trainer here. Um, you know, the guy you can, you can train Chobos with, you know, do the, 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 the Hyper Dodger challenges and the catch or one and, and all that sort of thing. We need to have a chat with him in order to, um, to, to, uh, to in order, well, believe it or not, not, not to get hold of a Celestial Weapon, but in order to open the pathway to a Celestial Weapon. Oh, uh, you see how much easier this is with no encounters, folks. It is glorious. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. What we need to do is we need to head all the way to the in initial entrance way from Makalania Woods. Now, you can say you can go to Makalania Woods itself um, and head here. And do it that way if you don't want to fight anything. You don't have a no encounters weapon because you won't get into any fights there. Um, like, maybe you'll get into like, a quick scuffle outside um, the Makalani Agency. That's about it. So we want to head all the way to the right. And we want to find the Chocobo Trainer. Who is not there for some bizarre reason. What? Where is he? Oh, don't tell me he was, like, at the, um, the ridge. Ugh. Well, if we leave here and come back in, I'm sure he'll be up there. Should be. I won't be impressed if he's not. There he is. That's who I was looking for. Right, so what we need to do, um, in order to get the, um, because unfortunately, the path to one of the weapons is blocked and we need to open it. We need to have a chat with this guy in order to do that. We want to train a chocobo, folks. So you, what you need to do is you need to come through um, and pl grab in, say, you know, find the person initially in the calm lands, and you need to do all these training courses one by one. What you need to do to, in order to free the path is you need to do the catch a chocobo um, challenge, and what you need to do is beat is beat the. Um, I believe you even need to beat the guy. No, 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 no. Not quite. You don't need to beat the Chocobo Trader, but you need to record a record time. Now, this, of course, is easier if you haven't done this much, where the record time is really, really crap. If you've been doing this a lot and you set, like, a really, really good time, it might be a bit more difficult to reset it, folks, because if you leave the Calm Lands and then come back, you have to break the record again. So 23.7, that we, sh we should get on. We should do this pretty quickly. So I say, all we got to do is beat the record time. Doesn't matter if we beat the train or not, just beat the record time. And I'm hoping I'm going to get this done first time. So I say, so we do this, make sure to get hold of the balloons. Yeah, three seconds off your time for each one. Dodge the birds, you'll get a three second penalty for each one that hits you. And the time spent recoiling. I've been doing this a lot off, whoa, goodness me, off screen anyways. Um, for a reason I'll get to in a moment, good grief! What was that? It's a pretty good run, this. What a run! Oh, the, the game forced me back in. Ooh. Oh, no. Swing left. Get the balloons, that will do. Right, we've absolutely smashed that record time. I'm just going to say it right now. We've destroyed it. That's not bad. Wow, that's not bad. 0.7 seconds. Wow. Draw it down my book. The price for that um, is a Turbo Aether. Um, Do bear in mind, if you manage to get that down to a uh, 0, you get a special key item, um, as I have mentioned earlier in the LP. Um, I have actually done that on a different save, but I'm not going to do it this one. It's not too important. Anyways. Once we've uh, recorded a record time, we can quit. We'll return back to the ridge, 
And you'll see this guy appears here. He saw the race. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty freaking awesome. That is important that the guy is there because he's the guy blocking the path. So now we want to ride a chocobo. I gotta get me one of those one day. And what we want to now do is go to where this guy was standing and where he wouldn't let you in early in the game. Because he blocks the path to slash your weapon because he's, an, he's a moron like that. So take the chocobo, or what? Well, you don't have to take a chocobo, it's just a lot easier. Um, and head all the way to the northwest of the calm lands. You got, obviously, this is the bridge. It's probably overlooking. Is this overlooking Zanakin? Like the Zanakin somewhere down there? Probably is. That's pretty cool. Anyways. What we want to do is you want to head to this little bit here. There's a tiny little ridge uh, that just sneaks down here very craftily. Now, the guy there usually stands about here and he won't let you pass. So, once you beat the record, nothing to stop you. And down here, there is a... Um, Something that the Celestial Mirror is reacting to, so let's go ahead and use it. You'll start recognising this seal a little bit, mind you. It's quite possible that... I don't know, does that relate to the mirror? I don't know. Use the mirror, opens the seal, and inside is Titus's Celestial Weapon. It's pretty cool. I, I quite like this one, the, the, the Kalad Bowl. Um, also, in, in various versions, it is actually called the Ultima Weapon. Um, or Ultima Weapon, I, should, I suppose I should say. Um, but, uh, no, for some reason, in the English version, it's called the, uh, the, the Clad Bog. I, I'm not quite sure. It just is. Does anyone even know what a Clad... I, I don't know. Anyways! Very good. Okay, then. So... Now we've got hold of Titus's, there's another Celestial Weapon for us to grab hold of in the car now, so, so we have to need to swing all the way right. And we want to head over to the Monster Arena. Where I have been a hell of a lot off screen, I can assure you. Oh boy. Now... This Celestial Weapon has been under our noses the whole time we've been coming here, folks. Yes, it's the chest that appears down here, folks. Oh, yes. And it's Yuna's, as she um, comes along to inspect the Nirvana. Which is a pretty, it's a pretty nice weapon, actually, once you get it uh, properly sorted out, mind you. No, we, we, we don't get to see the Nirvana, oddly enough. Um, in order to get this chest to appear, um, you need to uh, come to the Monster Arena and you must capture one of each fiend from the Calm Lands so that this place actually opens up properly. So, um, yeah. Yes, I've been doing lots of stuff. Lovely. So that is... Um, how many is that? That's four down already. Three to go, folks. Really nice. Why have I done that, folks? I need to go back onto the airship. I could walk to where I need to go, but it would take a long time. If you've got a, if you've got a free taxi, you might as well use it. Gotta love the door-to-door -door service. Okay, then. So, we've got Titus's, Yuna's, Lulu's, and Riku's, folks. So, that leaves... Kamari, Waka, and Auron. Um, now... Waka is easy to get. Auron is easy enough to get. Kamari is a little bit awkward, so... We'll do that one last. Let's go get Waka's next, actually, thinking about it. Um, now, Waka's... There is two ways you can actually get hold of his own weapon. But we might as well go to Luca. It kind of involves both of them. Um, just like his overdrives, um... His, uh... Um, getting over the w of um, Walker's armor weapon um, does involve Blitzball tournaments as well. Uh, there's two ways to get it. Um, you can get it via a prize, like a first prize in in the uh, leagues or tournaments, um, by playing loads of Blitzball, just like how you get hold of the attack reels, status reels, and the auric reels for Walker. Anyways, 
Um, and, uh, you know, you get as a first prize for that. But there is another way of doing it, folks. Um, I believe if you win... I forget how many games it is. It might be like five or ten or something like that. Um, or if you come uh, top three um, in, a, in a legal tournament, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I know you got to do... You know, do a little bit of blitz ball, you know, like win a tournament basically, which isn't too hard. Um, and then you want to head to the Luca Bar. Now there's all sort of guys in here, folks. Lots of people, obviously discussing a lot of um, recent events. Yes, the, the Guado tearing down home, the buggers. Uh, the temple's way out of line. Uh, there's a Pavel guard, yeah, the temples aren't doing too well. Um, there's a woman here. Hi, Summoner's daughter, it's traitor, bad. Is, you, is she a traitor? Not really. Um, do note, you can actually recruit her, that's she. Um, and she's not a bad character, actually. Uh, I remember the first time I played that I actually recruited Shu. She's quite handy. But the person you want to talk to is the bar owner. Over here, or the bar staff, or whoever she is. Hey there, star player. I can't believe I just gave you that voice. Uh, she has it, yes. We have it. She wants to see it, folks. She wants to see our junk. I never thought I would say that in a Let's Play video. Show the Celestial Mirror, and she'll say, yeah, I'm honoured to hand over the family heirloom. Walker, very pleased with himself. The world champion. Waku is ultimate weapon. Our ancestors received the artifact from Lord High Summoner O'Holland himself, folks. Nice little bit of history. Please use it with care. Oh, thank God she's not watching the rest of this LP. Uh, and so that's the easy way um, to uh, to get hold of the World Champion. So, so you can win it in a tournament or a league as well if you want to. But that's the easy way. Alright, lovely. So that's Walker's done. Uh, next up, um, let's go get Oren's uh, armor weapon, which I've been looking forward to getting. So we need to head back to a, um, a Traveler's Sphere. Uh, Oren's armor um, weapon actually isn't too far away from where we are at the moment, actually. Um, but it's still going to be quicker for us to um, get hold of a, uh, to do it via airship. So let's go to um, the uh, CC here, reboard Fahrenheit. And we want to head over to the Mushroom Rock Road. Now, um, do not select Mushroom Rock because that takes you back to where... Um, it's really easy to do that, to select that, but uh, it does take you to the Mushroom Rock Road, but you can't go anywhere, so it's just to get hold of um, the God Hound, which is no good. Same as the battle site, not really a lot of good here, folks, either. So what you want to do is select the Jose Road, here we go. and then just make your way back slightly. You can also go to the Mean Iron Road and get a Chocobo to, to there as well if you want, but it doesn't matter too much. This is the quickest way. So, get hold of that. Oh, hello. The warrior monks who are patrolling the high road have left. Ah. Um. Uh, the only arson you're looking for is absolutely no one, mate. So, we want to head over to the Mushroom Rock Road. Um, you know, where we sort of went along to um, go to meet Seymour, you know, and all that. Um, back in uh, Operation Meehen. Oh, chest. Hello. Is. That's nice. Um, now, you want to ideally come from this direction, because now at this part of the game, there are some not-so-nice people in this area you can run into, and if you run into them, you're going to die. Um, I'm just going to say it around, you, you, it, it, you're dead, okay? It's, it's game over, goodbye, see you next time. So... Head from the north side, or the east side, I suppose you could say. That's the safest thing to do. Um, there's this little um, plinthy altery bit here. 
Um, just to show you where it is, um, this is, um, if you head along here just a little bit further. Um, that bit on the left, that's the actual entrance to the Mushroom Rock Road itself. Do not head down there, you will die. Don't do it. Um, and this is where, like, um, I think it was like Lucille and Cla well, there's no, it's Clasco, I believe, was here blocking you from going here during the main campaign, folks. So, what you want to do is just head slightly on forwards, go to this little um, thing on the ground, and activate it. And what that'll do, it will take you up to this. Now this is a hidden statue of um of uh, Lord um Lord O'Holland, folks. Remember we ran into a few of the oh oh Lord Mien even Lord O'Holland, uh Mien. You remember we ran along a few of these in the uh, in the uh, Mien High Road, you know, and um, getting the the lectures and all that from uh, Machen. Um, now what you need to do is you need to interact with this um, with this statue. What you do, if you need to go to it, and you must use a sp special key item that we got already got hold of, folks. Which is all the way down wherever the heck it is. This one. The Rusty Sword, folks. Now, the Rusty Sword, you also get the Calm Lands. If you go, um, just north of the Calm Lands, like where the, um, the Cavern of the Stolen Faith is, where you find your Jimbo. Um, head the opposite direction and just throw the ridge along and towards the end you'll know, find crusaders and that. Um, eventually you'll find there's like a, a sword stuck in the ground. Just inspect everything, you'll find this. Take the rusty sword to here and investigate the statue. That's roughly the sword you're looking for by the way when you're going along. It's, it's not too difficult to find. Place the sword and that will reveal the Celestial Seal. That was not quite meant to rhyme, but it sounded good. Again, use the mirror. And that gives you the Masamune. No, Riku. It's not yours. It's his. Hey! <laughs> that is a sick looking blade. Oh, we're going to have so much fun with that, folks. You do not even know. Oh, boy. Lovely. So, let's just check the equipment down here. So, we've already got the god hand there. Say so, Tyus Clodball, Nirvana World Champion, Masamune, and the Onion Knight. So that only leaves Kamari Spirit Lance. Now, Kamari Spirit Lance is a little bit tedious um, to uh, to get hold of, folks. I'm gonna be a little bit honest. Having no encounters makes your life so much easier as well. Um, again, head down this side, so don't even tempt the game to throw you into death. Don't even give it a chance, folks, okay? Don't do it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not too hard to actually get hold of at the Spirit Lance, but it's, it's harder work than it really ought to be. And to get hold of that, we need to make our way back to the Thunder Plains. So, we'll make our way down our boxes. Along the, uh, the side of the battle. The aftermath, yep. Not a good place to be. Well, it's been cleared up a bit at least now. Janet has been at work, earning his hard-earned dollars. And we need to make our way to Thunder Plains. There. Here we go! Oh, Sid. You do make me laugh. Lovely. Now, to get hold of um, Kamari's Spirit Lance, um, 
It's a little bit fiddly, this. Um, it's, it's not too bad, folks, but, um, you know, it, it's a bit annoying. Unfortunately, it does involve traveling around the Thunder Plains, so if you don't have anything with no encounters, you're going to get into so many fights, which really draws this out. But fortunately, um, this is going to be a bit easier, folks. So, um, Kamari Spirit Lance um, revolves around the Cactal Stones that, are, that have been sealed around. Uh, you might remember we started to delve in this um, during the main LP. Um, and then I very quickly realized, oh, hold on a second, I can't actually do this yet. Yeah, it's it's basically that, folks. So, all the stones that have been sealed around um, from whatever the... Oh, who's the guy that sealed all the stones? I don't even remember the guy's name. Oh, bloody Nora. It was one of the, it was one of the high summoners. Oh, I can't remember. Anyways, it doesn't matter. What we need to do... Um, is we need to travel around and we need to activate some of the stones. Um, now there's a little, um, a little, um, uh, little reading material back in the uh, agency saying about the stones and about how you basically need to walk in front of them and press square. I also forgot I'm still going to get hit by lightning bolts. Isn't that brilliant? Now what we need to do, as like I say, so there's one here. You know, it's a stone. Unfortunately, if you press the square button now, nothing happens. You've got to wait for these damn things to glow. Now, unfortunately, they will gradually, you know, glow and unglow like there. Well, while it's glowing, press the square button. You do not have long to press square, mind you, but a few seconds. Super. So there's one there. There's some more stones in and around this top bit here, but say they they vary between glowing and non-glowing. Um, you only need to activate three stones. So what we need to do is say just activate that one, which is the, the awkward one, and then we want to head back in, and then we head to the south area, where there are two more stones that need um, to be to be uh, activated. I'm still rubbish at jumping these. How I got the 200 lightning dodges here, I may never know. Well, it took me three days and... Oh, hello. I forgot you were here. There's a Jack Sphere here. Ah, why don't I have a quick peek? We're ahead of time. Hey, hold it steady. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> oh, goodness. What do you see there, my lord? Oh, I was just thinking. This is important. No fooling around. What is Jack doing? You're going to spoil it. Whoa. Whoa, holy mother of... Oh, my God, he's down. He's got nailed by a lightning strike. Are you all right? Now there's a scene for posterity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that aura and trying with wit? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Ah, oh, good fun. I forgot this was here, so, you know, solid. Right, that was fun. Okay then, so, um, now with that done, so let's go activate our two more stones. Now, I've already activated these, so I'll just show the locations. One of them is this stone here. Um, so I'm pressing X, doesn't say anything, because I've already activated it. And the other one that we want to go and activate is all the way on the other side. Ooh, what the? What? Did I just see something? Uh, I think my eyes are starting to see me here. It's old age. Um, and the other thing we want to do is the other stone is here, which isn't too far from the start area. Again, already activated. Once you've activated three, oh for goodness sakes! Oh for goodness sakes! Well, once you activate all um, with the three of those, head back in towards the central area here. Yes, my eyes are not deceiving me, folks. That is like a little illumination of a cactor. Follow the illumination as best you can, which is difficult. 
Because it's trying to show you something. It's trying to show you to over here, folks. See how there's like a there's a broken tower here on the right side. As my cattle friend is just handily pointing out. Come to uh, the tower and press the square button. You just have to know to do this. There is no clue that this is what you have to do. And the lightning strike reveals our treasure chest. Open it with the mirror. And inside there is... Nothing. Huh? I don't, I don't know. That, nothing. That, that, that ain't right. Hold, hold on. I have to look this one up, folks. What's, nothing. What's going on? Could the internet have lied? What in goodness sakes? Well, mother of goodness sakes and... Ooh, hello. There is Kamari's spirit lance. It looks really, really, really pretty. I'll give him that. And so now we have all seven celestial weapons, folks. Tyrus is Kladbog. Um, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, Yuna's Nirvana. Oren's Masamune. Um, all along with the Murasami, which is a really cool um, pairing. That uh, Kamari Spirit Lance. Uh, Walker's World Champion, Lulu's Onion Knight, and finally Riku's God Hand, which is really awesome. But, as I alluded to, there is a lot more, there is a lot more to Celestial Weapons than just picking them up, folks. As you saw, all of them, you know, they just have no ability points. So if you're using them in battle, you will not gain any experience. Now that really sucks. Also, is we can't customise it. Just like the Brotherhood. Same thing, we can't actually customise it. Because we need to get the game to do it for us. So let's reboard the airship. Right, okay then. So, we've got all seven um, Celestial Weapons. So now we need to figure out what going to do with them. Like I say, we, we've got them, but there's clearly more to be done. Now, it's not obvious what you need to do with these, um, but there is a clue, and that resolves some of the key items we've been getting, folks. All these crest and signals we've been getting, celestial tokens, folks, notice. Now, I haven't got all of them, far from it, folks. Uh, there's 14 to get. On this save, I've only got six. On another one, I think I've got seven. Um, but, uh, yeah. We haven't actually uh, got all of them yet. But these things are the secrets to the um, to the Celestial Weapons folks. We've been getting hold of these as we've gradually gone along uh, through the game. And there are plenty more for us to get for doing various bits and pieces, folks. Which is, which is cool. Now, what the, um, the way this basically works is that... Um, different uh, ones of these um, actually correlate to particular um, Celestial Weapons folks. So, uh, the Mars Crest and the Mars Sigil reflect to, um, to Auron's uh, Masamune. Uh, the Mercury Crest belongs to Riku's, I believe. Um, the Moon Crest is... Uh, I believe that's Yuna's. Um, the Sun... Uh, Tidus's one is the Sun one's. You've also got Venus, um, as well as Saturn and Jupiter, um, if memory serves me correctly. Um, and you need to collect, hold, uh, collect these, and these you must use in order to actually bring out the full power of your Celestial Weapons, folks. How do we do that? Well, like a lot, a lot of things in life, folks, it's one big circle. We need to go back to the Lakalani Woods. Here we go! 
we must go full circle um, around folks. And what we must do is we must revisit where we got the Celestial Mirror in the first place. This is why I wasn't too worried about showing off where this was at the start of the video, because I was always going to show it at the end. So we need to head on to this right bit here. Head along the, the, the starry, glittery part. I, I still don't know what this is. I still do not know what this is. Uh, what's making this a path? I don't know. Anyways, head along the path. And we want to go back to where we found the boy. Back to where we turned the cloudy mirror into the celestial mirror. And back up here. And if you come here and you interact with it. Have you the celestial weapons? Well, of course, folks. We've got every one. <laughs> this is where you must... Um, uh, basically, you must use the crests and sigils that you gain in order to um, enhance weapons. Now, Tidus is we don't have any. So if you have a character that has none... Time has not yet arrived. That sucks. But we can do Yuna's though. Um, we've got the Moon Crest for her. You must offer the Moon Crest to complete the ritual. We will do so, folks. So there's a Nirvana. First look at that. If you can see it that well on the screen. If so, congratulations, because I can't see it too well either. <laughs> we'll see it in battle. And the weapon's power has grown. So, um, if you uh, complete or um, complete a ritual with a weapon with its crest, you will. Um, not, it doesn't get no AP yet, but it gives it double overdrive, folks. Double overrate charging, a double the char the overrate the overdrive charge rate. God, that took a lot of attempts, which is really cool. Um, unfortunately, though. We don't have the Moon Sigil, so we can't strengthen it further, which is a bit annoying. Also, do note as well, just as an interesting side point here. Oh, you see how with the Venus Sigil, we've got the Sigil, but we haven't got the Crest. Um, if you decide you want to try and do that, the Venus one is Lulu's, if I remember correctly. Um, if you do not have the Crest... You can't do anything. Even if you have the sigil, you must have the crest first. Which is kind of annoying. I'm pretty sure it um, is the case. Yeah, because the only two that we have got sigils for is Or and Riku. So, let us completely fully upgrade then. So, we'll do Oren's Masamune first. <laughs> that is a sick looking weapon. <laughs> So, lovely. Um, all the weapons, the first time you strengthen them, will give it double overdrive, um, but will still retain no AP. You must have both the Crest and the Sigil in order to fully strengthen your weapons and get every single bit out of them. Oh, baby. That is a good sight. The weapon attains its maximum power. Um, and all of the ultimate weapons all have their um, own varying uh, abilities that will have folks. So I'll show you Auron's here. So Auron's Masamune. Break damage limit, which is which goes along all of them. All of the ultimate weapons, um, the celestial weapons. When fully upgraded, all have break damage limit and all will have triple over overdrive. Apologies there. The last two abilities will vary. So in this case, for um, Auron, he gets first strike and counter attack. Counter attack, we're used to. First strike, he will get the first action in the battle. Um, which is really, really damn useful. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, do note, though, you might be wondering, especially if you haven't played the game, you might be thinking, well, hold on a second. 
What about piercing? You know, or, or you know, I've been, always been using this this whole time for um, you know, for uh, for you know, to deal with um, you know, pit, um, heavily armored characters and enemies even. Uh, you know, just like I've been using with Kamari. You know, I mean, that's no good. You know, I, I, you know, I could get a a Murasami. I could give that break damage limit. You know, so is that not going to be better against armored enemies? Well, no, actually, um, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, celestial weapons, um, the damage they deal, um, kind of runs off its own kind of, uh, it doesn't work the same way as, uh, as normal weapons, folks. Um, uh, so basically the way it works is a celestial weapon, um, when you, uh, well, it, it does it anyways, I believe, but uh, it will actually ignore a, um, a, uh, an enemy's defense completely. Uh, when it's calculating the damage, um, it ignores defense. So piercing, you know, I'm pretty sure it ignores. I'm, I'm pretty sure it ignores piercing, um, if memory serves me effect. Um, or does it? Hold on, no, it doesn't, does it? No, I don't believe it does actually. No, I think I think um, enemies with piercing. Yes, I believe piercing still applies actually. I think it does actually. I think um, if if armored enemies will still receive a a, a defense boost uh, because they don't have piercing, I, I believe that is actually the case. Um, but they ignore defense anyway, so generally speaking, it will still do a severe amount of damage. Um, also, um, the all the celestial weapons also uh, the amount of damage they do not only um, does it ignore defense. But it also depends on the stats of the character um, using it at the time. Um, believe it or not. not, not I mean, not just, you know, how strong are they, you know, what's their strength, what's their magic stat or anything like that. Um, I mean, um, a, a lot of the weapons, uh, basically all the weapons, um, they will do more damage uh, the, the healthier character is. So, like I said, with, um, with Titus's um, Kaladbog, Kaladbol, if I can ever pronounce it. Um, if you use the weapon uh, when you've got, uh, you know, when Titus has um, full HP, um, at, you know, just as standard ultimate weapon tradition of, of other games, folks, um, if his HP is maxed out, you know, as in, like, he's got full health on him, not has he got 99999 HP as a max HP, I mean, like, now, is he fully healed, he will do more damage with the weapon than if, say, he had, like, 200. Um, and that's very, that also applies to a few other weapons. I believe Kamari's is like that. Um, as is Walker's. Walker's is. Um, Kamari's is, as I just looked down my list. Um, and so does Riku's as well, her god hand. Um, Yuna's and uh, Lulu's art weapons work differently. Um, they don't run on HP, folks. They work on MP. So if you've got full MP, they will do more damage um, than uh, otherwise, folks. Um, so uh, they could have as much, you know, they could have as much little health as you want. Just make sure they've got pretty good H um, MP, and you're generally fine. And you're generally fine as well, anyways, with rare armor weapons. Is uh, um, well, I don't think Lulu's, the, um, but I think uh, what does Lulu's? Lulu, Lulu's does. Yuna's might as well, actually. Is I think the armor weapons, both of them, when fully powered, have one MP cost. Um, so everything uses one MP. So their power virtually doesn't diminish unless it gets drained for some reason, which which some enemies do do, which is annoying. Um, Auron's as well also works differently. Um, Auron's, oddly enough, Auron's Masamune works in reverse to everyone else's HP. He does more damage the less. HP he has, oddly enough. Um, and interestingly enough, if he's got full HP, he actually does less damage um, than, than he normally would. I believe it's about I think it's a high, half damage. Um, so you've got to be beware of that. Um, so if you get him down to like 1% HP, you know, he does like a ridiculous amount of damage. And I believe as well in the... Uh, in the original Japanese release, uh, the Master Mune 
um, the effects by the HP um, were actually double what they are in all the other versions. So like, I think I've, I heard that, like it one if he had like one HP, he did like quadruple damage or something utterly absurd. Um, but that's just how the scale works, folks. He got toned down a little bit for this game, but it's not so bad. Um, so that is, uh, well, how to get hold of the, all the other weapons. Um, as for the sigils, I'll quickly go um, about where you find the crest and sigils for all the um, old weapons, because, you know, we might as well tack it on at the end, because you'll want to know. Um, I'm not going to be able to show off all, uh, most of any of these, really. i am just just have to listen. Uh, so we'll do um, Titus's first, the, the clad bowl. Um, so, the sun crest and the sun sigil. Now, the sun sigil... I actually have on a different save. Uh, let me just load it up here, folks. Uh, the Sun Sigil is what you get um, on the uh, if you complete the the Chocobo race to, to you know to move the guy to get the little weapon in the first place. So that one there. Um, and if you uh, move the guy, if you complete the race in a perfect time, i.e. Zero seconds, so you collect enough balloons and miss enough birds to get your time to zero. Um, you will get the sun sigil, which is really nice. Um, the sun crest um, is actually um, it's Zanakan Dome, folks. Um, and it's actually the place where we fight Unaleska. Um, once when you defeat Unaleska, um, if you like try to go on any of the stairs, um, the uh, the game will kind of um, uh, it will uh, sort of send you to a, a secret little location, and inside there's a chest um, which has the sun crest. Now, unfortunately, you've got to get the um, you've got to get it immediately after defeating Unaleska, which I didn't do. So, if I want to get hold of the um, the the crest, I have to go back to Zanakund and go back to that area and get hold of it, which is fine. Except there's now a super boss sitting in there, which I have to beat first. Which is a problem. I really should have got it first. So that that's a um, that's a problem I'm gonna have to deal with myself. But never mind. Uh, Yuna um, in the Nirvana. Um, the Mooncrest we got pretty easily. Just go to the Sate Beach um, and just follow the ocean around. And there's a little bit on the uh, the eastern side, and, and there's just a chest just sitting right there. We got it really early in the main LP. Really easy. Um, the Moon Seagull, um, you must get, um, in the, uh, the Remian Temple, folks. Um, and you've got to go there and defeat all of Belgamine's Aeons, folks. Um, which we have been doing most of. Um, but we haven't gone back to beat the rest yet. So, we'll be doing that very soon. But once you beat all the, um, beat all the, um, the Aeons, uh, I'm not going to put any spoilers here, but there's something you have to do, um, with Belgamine. Um, and if you do do that, you'll be given the Moon Sigil um, in, to get hold of her, um, so you can fully enhance her weapon. Uh, we'll be doing that as soon as we can. Auron's is really quite easy. The easiest of the lot, usually. Um, the Mars Crest um, is near the entrance to the Mushroom Rock Road. Um, just follow, just, just basically explore the whole area and you'll find a chest hiding around like a, a little ravine which has the uh, the Mars Crest in it. The Mars Sigil um, is from the Monster Arena. Um, you must unlock a total of 10 Area Conquest or Species Conquest enemies, um, or any combination of either, which, you know, basically just, just go around all the um, areas you've gone before, capture one of every fiend, and by the time you get back, you'll have the Mars Sigil. Nice and easy. Okay, then. Let's do the one I have got so far. Let's do Lulu's. Um, she's got the uh, the Venus um, tokens. Uh, the Venus signal we got. Um, you must go and dodge 200 consecutive lightning bolts without leaving the area, which took me three days to do, but we did do it. Um, and if you want to go back to my Thunder Plains video, I give some advice on how to do that. Uh, the Venus Crest, um, eh, we haven't. I just forgot to get. Um, um, well, after, um, Titus originally said, during the campaign itself, um, that Seymour went to Makalonia Temple, uh, if we revisit the Far Plane, there's a chest with a Venus Crest in it, which I just haven't got around to getting, so I will probably do that next video. Um, the only other, the two weapons that we do not have anything for so far, um, are 
uh, Walkers, uh, Alpha Walker. Uh, he has the Jupiter. Um, he has the Jupiter tokens. Uh, the Jupiter Crest um, is found in the Poseidorix locker room. Um, but you've got to enter there. I believe it's. Um, I think it's after the after that we leave Luca the first time. We finish the bits of the tournament. I think we can head back and. The, the, the chest is somewhere there. Um, I'll show it on the screen probably like next video. I'll, I'll pick up a few of these tokens and then we'll do some bits and pieces. Um, so that's in the Poseidorix locker room in Luca. Uh, the Jupiter Seagull, um, uh, you have to, to win via a um, Blitzball tournament um, and it will just appear as prizes alongside, you know, like with the, the status reels and the, the world champion if you want to get it that way as well. Uh, Kamari and his Spirit Lance. He has the uh, the Saturn. Is it Saturn? I believe it is. Uh, the Saturn, yes, the Saturn Sigils or Saturn Tokens. Uh, the Saturn Crest is um, at the top of is near the top of Mount Gagazet. Um, just uh, and I completely missed it in the campaign. Um, if, we, if you go back to where you remember we fought, fought Seymour Flux, you know the infamous boss fight. Um, we take care of him, and then you start moving away to Zanakin itself, um, and sort of further to like the, the actual peak of Mount Gagazet. You go inside, and do little challenges. Um, in the little pathway we do, and there's like a load of pillars on both sides. And hidden behind one of those is a chest with the Saturn Crest. I just completely missed it, folks. I utterly, utterly missed it. Wasn't good. Um, the Saturn Seagull. Is actually back in the Makalania Woods, folks. Um, you know, remember the butterfly challenge that we did? Um, the the butterfly mini game. Um, you know, we did during the campaign. Uh, find the, there's like a guy with a harp. Speak to him. And you've got to do a li little mini game, collecting um, blue butterflies and avoiding red butterflies. Uh, we did it. Um, we did it in both areas before. You know, while we were on the actual campaign. Uh, return to there after the airship. Uh, after you get the airship, you can do both again, and if you do both again, um, you will get the Saturn signal, uh, which is a little bit awkward, but it's, it's not too hard to get. And lastly, before my throat completely dies, is uh, Riku's, uh, the, Mercury's um, the Mercury tokens, which are pretty easy to get. Uh, the Mercury Crest you find um, in the final area in, in Beaconel Desert. Um, you find that where the um, you know where the uh, the Cactor mini the, the Cactor sort of um, uh, area is um, that's being protected by a sandstorm. Um, the final area of the desert before you go into home. Um, on the west side of that area, there's like a little um, little offshoot, and inside one of the sand pits um, is a box with the Mercury Crest. Not pretty pretty easy to find. Um, and the Mercury Sigil, you've got to complete the uh, the Cactor side quest itself, which I did. Uh, a couple of videos ago, so um, check that out if you want to know how to get past that. It's it's pretty easy. Um, it does help if you have a no encounters um, piece of equipment on you, which I didn't. But even if you don't, it's not too hard. Just a little bit time consuming. And once you get all of those, you can take those back to the um, back to Makalania Woods, and you can go and upgrade all your old weapons, folks, which we will be doing over the course of the next few videos, as and when I get these tokens. Oh, goodness me, my voice is absolutely killing. Alright then, folks, so um, thank you very much for watching this part of uh, Final Fantasy X. I hope you've um, enjoyed it and found it very useful and, and interesting. Um, and I hope that, you know, if, if you guys are playing along on the HD version or whatever else, I, I hope it does help you out. So because you will be needing these powered up celestial weapons for some of the super bosses later on in the game, believe me. So next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy X, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be quickly dotting around, very quickly, get hold of a few of these, um, a few of these, uh, the, the, the crescent signals that um, as I mentioned, probably. Or I might just get those off screen. I, I haven't decided yet. No, I'll show them, I'll show them. And then we are going to be heading to the only optional dungeon in the entire game, folks. The Omega Ruins. It's a dangerous old place. A very, 
very dangerous old place, folks. But um, I'm hoping we have enough with us now to hopefully try and survive. But um, be prepared for a big fight. Because there is an even bigger one waiting for you at the end, folks, believe me. So thank you all very, very much for watching. And next time, the Omega Rains. I'll see you then. Ciao.